get your best day good morning mm-hmm mm-hmm ah oh, it's hot up here okay I, I just want to make sure I wasn't the only one all right good morning church it is a blessing an honor and a privilege to have the awesome responsibility of giving a Bible talk this morning. Hmm. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us all the way here. We thank you for helping us to overcome obstacles during the week. We thank you for allowing us to walk through challenges, tests, valleys, trials, obstruction, construction, and all the things that were designed to distract us, to hinder us, and to break us down. Father, we thank you for bringing us all the way here, and we ask that you would give us time now to be sensitive to your word, to hear what you want us to hear, to understand what you want us to understand, and Lord, that our lives would be forever changed. Thank you for your word, and I pray that you would use me as a vessel. Fill me, Lord. Clean me. Change me. And let your people see you and not me. In your most precious name we do pray. Amen. <clears throat> Today we draw our scripture from the book of Proverbs. The youth ministry's, youth ministry's theme for this month is focusing on honesty and integrity. And as we continue our efforts of bringing downstairs, upstairs, we want to give you a taste of some of the scriptures that we are wrestling with with your children. Is that all right? All right. I want to say thank you to Pastor Earl for this opportunity and for challenging me uh, to, to do it. I want to say thank you to Q for pushing to ensure that the youth are represented here on Third Sundays uh, in this open space. Now I'm glad that y'all clapping for him because he told me I couldn't preach a sermon I had ready, but I had to pick one based on the verse of the month. And so today's verse is found in the 10th division of Proverbs. Verse 9. And it reads, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. But he who makes his or her ways crooked will be found out. Thank you. <clears throat> Whether you are new to Christianity or you are a senior saint, the book of Proverbs is extremely useful. When I was a teenager in this church, my youth minister, Pastor Marvin Williams, would say to us that if you need some place to go to start studying the Bible, go to Proverbs. It has wisdom that's going to help you every single day. And so he would say, if you don't know where to start, take a look at the calendar. Today is the 20th, so read Proverbs chapter 20. And that assignment was always useful, always helpful, because every time we encountered Proverbs, we saw something new. We saw something that dealt with what we were going through. And we saw principles that would last us throughout our lives. The chapters are short enough to make sure that it doesn't seem too daunting to read. They're short enough so that you can read them with your children and they're short enough so that you can read them on your lunch break or wherever it is that you find yourself needing some wisdom from God. This section of Proverbs is written by Solomon. So there are a few things that we need to understand about Solomon. You see, Solomon is the son of David. David is known as the man after God's own heart. So he has big shoes that he needs to feel. Solomon is the ruler who reigns over Israel's most prosperous time in history. There's no other time, even up to today, where Israel has been as prosperous, and it's because 
of his rule that we see this and the influence that his father left behind. Solomon had the awesome responsibility of building the temple. The temple was now the place where it, God's people were no longer going to be nomads. They were no longer going to walk around deserts and looking for cities, but they were going to build a place, and the center of their community was the church. Hmm. What an awesome assignment. Solomon is also known for entertaining the queen of Sheba. Now, the queen of Sheba comes from a place that we now call Ethiopia, so you can guess what she looks like. And we have this awesome entertaining that he goes through and revises the construction of his buildings because he wants to impress her. And the reason that she comes is the reason that we discuss this verse today. Because Solomon is known as the wisest man to ever have lived. He gets this wisdom due, due to divine inspiration and divine intervention. And so I asked the question, what is it that we're supposed to talk about this morning? Q said, gee, you need to stay in Proverbs 10, verse 9. <laughs> well, honesty is easy, right? Don't lie. I'm done. <laughs> Tell the truth. Point number two, we done. Don't fake the funk. And we home. We can go eat lunch. But I had to ask the question, why is honesty the pillar of what we're talking about in 2018? And then I turned on the news. When I turned on the news, I see a president that some of y'all voted for who's a pathological liar. When I turn on the news, I see individuals who can't sit down in Starbucks to have a drink because people lack integrity. When I turn on the news, I see people taking guns to school to shoot children because they lack integrity. When I turn on the news, I see the degradation of my community because people lack integrity. And when I walk down the streets of the neighborhoods where I grew up, I still see the crack house. I still see people strung out. I still see people destroying our community. And I know that integrity is still needed today. Hmm. So last week, we're in the teen class. We have a teen class that goes on downstairs, and Deacon Darrell Cohen is, uh, it leads that class, is teaching. I get to serve him. And then Minister Davis, Corey Davis, is in there with us as well. And one of the questions that came up is, is honesty always the best policy? Hmm. And it, as you think about it, 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 some people say yes, some people say no, and some people say maybe. And as we discussed that in class, the answer, some of the answers came out were that sometimes it's okay to lie. Hmm. Sometimes it's okay to deceive people. Sometimes it's okay to be truth adjacent. Sometimes it's okay to tell fake news. But what does that do to our society? What does that do to who we are as a people? What does that do to our friendships, our relationships, our marriages? And I, have to, uh, I, I, I had to understand that I can't blame these teenagers for understanding that sometimes lies are optional because I look at the generation before. And I look at my generation and say, well, you know, we did a little lying to ourselves. 
We've done a little lying to each other. We've done a little lying on social media. We've done a little lying as we go and apply for jobs. We've done a little lying as we go out and misrepresent ourselves. And so I can't blame these teenagers for thinking that lies have a place when all we've taught them is that we can lie to get ahead. All we've shown them is that politicians can lie and get elected. All we've shown them is that we can lie to get a promotion. All we've shown them is that you can lie to get yourself better. All we've shown them is that you can lie. That you have to lie. But I'm here to tell you today, God's integrity calls us to go to a different place. God's integrity says that as Christians, we don't have the, we're not afforded the opportunity to live like the world lives. We don't get the option to teach our kids that lying is okay because we're called to a higher standard. Hmm. What does it mean to have integrity? Walking in honesty and integrity means that there are no contradictions or discrepancies in thoughts, words, or actions. To be honest to one's real self and task earns trust and inspires faith in others. Honesty is never to misuse that which is given in trust. Integrity is shown when the person who is presented with a hard choice and with full knowledge that they will never get caught chooses the Christ-like path. Hmm. When I was younger, I remember playing some games. And you tell me if you played this game too. When, when, when you're little, you start by playing I Spy. Anybody here played I Spy? Were you, were, the, the, for those who are uninitiated, I Spy, well, I would say right now, I Spy something black and gold. And I could look over and see some shirts and, they, and you would say, oh, their shirts are black and gold. And we, we, we took that game I Spy, and as we got older, it, 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 it morphed a little bit. It went from I Spy into, let me know if y'all played this one. You had to live in certain neighborhoods to play this game. <laughs> we played, that's my car. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I still play that. <laughs> you see Pastor Earl rolled up, we're like, that's my car. <laughs> and so we began, we shifted from I spy into that's my car. But what did that shift do to us? We went from paying attention to what's going on around us to lusting after things that are out in the world. Hmm. Okay. So what does that have to do with integrity? Well, I don't know about you, but I played another game. As a, a, after I graduated from I Spy, I got a certificate. A, after I graduated from That's My Car, I was good. I was good at it. After I graduated from That's My Car, I moved on to a new game. Now this game, a little bit different. You see, with this one, this was connected to me being a little bit older me having some bills, me having some responsibilities, and me having some obligations. So I graduated cum laude from That's My Car and moved into, I hope I find some money today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, whoo! I just hope when I'm walking down the sidewalk, I can just find some money, just a wad of money. Just, you know, just woo, woo. Kind of like, that's why I walk behind Q. Just, <laughs> just, just, let me, just let me get a whiff of money. Just let me see what it feels like, what it smells like. And so I moved on to this and said, I hope I find some money today. Because I, I, I know exactly what I could do with it. Ooh, I know what bill I would pay. Ooh, I know what I would get from the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Like, ooh. And if I find a wide big enough, ooh, I'm going to get something to my mama. You know? Just, 
I'm, I'm going to do all these good things. And, and if I find a real big why, oh, yeah, I'm taking people out to eat. I'm celebrating. And then God began to challenge me. And he said, if you find a wad of money, then who lost it? Hmm. And he began to say, if you find a wad of money, that means somebody else lost it. So you're trying to put in on your bills and somebody else can't. You're trying to go get a steak, but somebody else can't get green beans. You want to take somebody out to eat where the Coens go called Ruth Chris. But that means somebody else can't afford the dollar menu. So what do you do if you find that money? How does your mindset change? And I had to say, Lord, I'm a tithe off of it. <laughs> That's better, right? I just pay my tithes, and then the church should come back around and bless them. And we'll be all right. That was, that, was, that was the right answer, right? Nah, that, that. And so God began to say, your integrity makes a difference, even in your imagination. The way that you think shifts the way that I look at you. Scripture says that another way is that so is a man's heart. Yeah. Come on now. What kind of things do you desire? Do you desire the things that would make God smile? Or would you desire the things that would make God frown? Wow. Hmm. And then he began to ask me a couple of more questions, and I'll ask you the same question. And he said, what do these answers reveal about your character? Have you ever lied to get out of work? Ooh. Maybe. <laughs> Have you ever lied to get out of a ticket? Mm. Oh, yeah. Have you ever lied to get out of jury duty? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes, yes. Have you ever lied to get someone you don't like to leave you alone? Ooh, but they annoying, God. But a lie is a lie. Ooh, and then there's this, this easy one. Have you ever lied to get off the phone? But a lie is a lie. Hmm. And then he said, you've now got a newborn. What type of message does that send to her? Because she, you're holding her. She's watching you. She's studying you. Parents know that you can't do anything without your, parents, without your children finding out. They're studying your every move. They're going to mimic it. They're going to listen to what you say, and then in mixed company, they're going to repeat it. <laughs> what does that say about your character? What does that say about integrity? Are you willing to stick with the truth? What signals does that behavior to send to God? Jesus says, whoever can be trusted with little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. I ain't the only one in here that prayed for a new car. I'm not the only one in here that prayed for a raise. I'm not the only one in here that prayed for a, 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 a bigger apartment, a bigger house. But Jesus said, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest 
with very little will also be dishonest with much. If I'm willing to cheat on the little things, why would God trust me with anything? The question of integrity isn't limited to major life decisions. Studies show that the average person lies 13 times a week. That's almost twice a day. I guess we take half the day off for of church. I get it. Dr. Paul Inkman was ranked one of time's most 100 influential people. He is known as the world's deception expert. He's the author of the book, telling lies, and has been studying lies for decades. According to his research, and this check me, people lie so frequently they don't even know they're lying. Hmm. I'm so used to lying that I don't even know when I'm doing it. Come on. Come on. So what does scripture say about those of us who tell lies? Well, we can stay in Proverbs for this answer. Lying lips are detestable to the Lord. But faithful people are his delight. I never want to be in a place where God looks at me and says, you are detestable. Wow. God and sin cannot operate the same space. Either God is going to leave and let sin have its pleasures, or sin is going to leave and let God have God's way. The question we have to ask is, are we giving God space to have dominion, or are we giving sin space to run roughshod? What does scripture say about the words that we choose to speak? We can still stay in Proverbs. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. Now to the Jew who this was written, the word used for death in this verse would invoke the spirit of death. Now, this isn't the death that I hope comes for me when I'm 100 years old and when I'm cuddling with my wife and we just die together at, at, off on a resort in Jamaica. <laughs> hook it up, hook it up, Lord, hook it up, Lord. <clears throat> but this is talking about the violent death. This is talking about the unrelenting death. This is talking about the death that takes no prisoners. This is the same death that we see in Egypt. And what's now known as the Passover. This same spirit of death is the spirit of death that decimated Egypt. And that only saved those who were covered by the blood. I'll let you hold on that. Hmm. So if death and life are in the power of the tongue, we have to ask ourselves, with every time we lie, are we inviting death or life? So every time we lie, we're inviting death. That's like saying to the spirit, that vicious spirit of death, hey, death, come let's spend some quality time together. Hey, death. Come to school with me and take this test. Hey, death, come sit right next to me. Hey, death, come with me on my job performance review. Hey, death, come over and visit my family. Hey, death, come into my relationship. Hey, death, come into my marriage. Hey, death, come and hang out with my children. Hmm. Fortunately for us, speaking death is not the only option. We have the privilege to speak life. We have the ability to speak truth. And what happens when there is a breakdown of trust? Hmm. Well, no one can tell the detriment of dishonesty better than Ananias and Sapphira. The fifth division of Acts tells their story. And I'll read it for you quickly. But a man named Ananias, with his wife Sephora, sold a piece of property. And with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart 
to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back for yourself a portion of the proceeds for the land. While it remained unsold, it remained your own. And after it was sold, it was still at your disposal. Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. And a great fear came upon all who heard it. But there was Ananias and his wife, correct? Hmm. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. After an interval of three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for this price. And she said, yeah, for that price. And Peter checked her. How is it that you have agreed to test the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those men who have buried your husband are at your door, and they will carry you out. Immediately, she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. It's clear that God takes honesty and integrity seriously. These two were under no pressure, no obligation to sell the land. It was their land. They made the conscious decision to say, I'm going to join this Christian community. I'm going to join this sect, as they called it in the day, of the way. I'm, we're going to go out and we're going to sell it. And not only we're going to sell our land so that we can give a donation, we're going to keep some for ourselves. Still no problem. The issue is not that they kept money for themselves. The issue was that they lied about it. It didn't say, don't be comfortable. We all know you got to eat. Just tell the truth. Simple. But what does that do to us? The same spirit of death that was at the Passover. The same spirit of death that took Ananias and Sapphira. That's the same spirit of death that we invite. When every time we are dishonest. Their honorable desires were wiped away by their intense deception. Scripture says, let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. Here we have defiance with catastrophic consequences. Beloved, I will let you in on a little secret. All lying has consequences. There's no such thing as a little lie. There's no such thing as a white lie. There's no such thing as a lie to conceal the truth. All lying has consequences. A, die, a lie destroys the liar and their relationship with God. No one here or at home is worth destroying your relationship with God. When a lie is discovered, it destroys the connection between two people and it destroys the connection between that person and God. Scripture is clear on the importance of honoring your word and being trustworthy. Here God decided that Ananias and Sapphira were so untrustworthy that they didn't even deserve to be around other Christians. That checked me to say, how many times have I lied? How many times have I been dishonest? How many times have I been deceitful? How many times have I said, oh, well, I'll just bend the truth a little bit. I'll just twist my words a little bit. But if God cannot trust you, then what purpose do you have left to fulfill? Hmm. This means that all lying is detrimental, not only to our relationships, but lying can be detrimental to your life. The latter half of today's verse is clear, that when a person who walks without integrity will be discovered and exposed. In yesteryear, people would say, what's done in the dark will come to light. History likes to applaud those who we consider to be honest. So in elementary school, everybody learned about Honest Abe because he was supposedly a man who could tell no lies. Well, let us explore what scripture has to say about the benefits of honesty. 
The person who walks with integrity walks securely. There is no shame. There is no hidden agenda. There is no ulterior motive. The person with integrity, the person with honor. The person with the honest tongue is a person who gets to walk in peace. If I tell no lies, I need not worry about gossip. If I tell no lies, I don't have to hang my head low when I walk into a room. When I tell no lies, I can walk it with integrity, and everywhere I go, people have to say the same. When I walk with integrity, I'm promised four things. God will provide contentment, a quiet and peaceable life, a good conscience, and the honest are recommended for positions of authority. The person who walks in integrity walks surely. They walk on solid ground. Now, for those who are my Bible scholars who want to go back and look at older language, the phrase here is terra firma. Terra firma means that I'm walking on ground so secure that it could only be God who built this ground. And so as I walk with integrity, I need not worry because I'm walking on solid ground. When I walk with integrity, I don't have to stumble or be concerned about cracks in the pavement that are going to trip me up because God secured this ground. We started this morning by discussing how much of, in Scripture God calls his people to be different. When you are different, people around you begin to take notice. For those of you who have been engaging in the fast, congratulations. We are, we are nearing the end. We can get through today, and you can get your ribs back. <laughs> and for those who are, were walking through in the devotional, this morning's devotional was rather interesting. It talked about how during this fast, you've been eating nuts and berries and drinking water, and your diet has changed. And people took notice. Your weight went down and people took notice. Your stomach was growling and people took notice. <laughs> you were a little bit more prayerful and people took notice. The things that you were talking about shifted and people took notice. And so you began to do all these changes. And what God is saying is that our assignment as Christians is to be different. You shouldn't look like everybody else at the workplace. You shouldn't look like everybody else at school. You shouldn't talk like everybody else in your neighborhood. You should be different. And God is calling us to a different place, to be set apart, to be the example, to be the light that shines in the darkness. The presence of God should absolutely disrupt the status quo. When you walk in the room, do people still cuss and spit? Or do they change their tone? When you walk in the room, do still people still do illegal activity and, and partake in drugs that they shouldn't? Or do they try to hide them? What are people doing when your presence is made known? So we, at, we close with the, a couple of these questions. How would things be different if everyone at your school operated in honesty and integrity? How would things be different at your job if everyone acted in honesty and integrity? How would things be different if everybody in your phone acted with honesty and integrity? How would things be different if husbands operated in honesty and integrity? How would things be different if politicians acted in honesty and integrity? How would things be different if new hope acted in honesty and integrity. I came across this story, and it gives a good summary for what we're talking about this morning. A young lady was at a beach. She's hanging out by herself, and then a little boy walks up to her. And he says to her, do you believe in God? The young lady is surprised by the question, and she says, why, yes, I do. Then he asks her, do you go to church every Sunday? And again, her answer was, yes, I do. Then he asked, do you read your Bible and pray? She said, yes, I do. 
By now, her curiosity is very much aroused. She's ready for the next question and excited about the young man is going to ask her. And at last, the young man sighed and said, with obvious relief, will you hold my quarter while I go swimming? <laughs> Are you the type of person this little boy can trust? Are you, can you answer the questions that will lead to someone thinking that you have integrity? Can you answer the questions that say, this is an honest person? Can you hold that quarter? Can you be trusted? Now, if that quarter adds 10 zeros behind it, can you still be trusted? We don't, like, we don't get to lie like other people do. Our assignment is bigger. Our calling is much higher. Think about your mindset this month. What can you change? What can you do differently? How can you walk in integrity? How can you walk in honesty? What lies do you need to stop telling? Who do you need to stop lying to? Who do you need to stop lying in front of? Our challenge today is to operate in honesty and integrity. Our words have the power of life and death. And so today, speak life over your household. Speak life over your family. Speak life over your body. Speak life over your community. And don't let dishonesty and integrity cancel all that out. Amen. Why don't we say amen? Amen. amen, amen, amen. Let's thank God for Reverend Garrett Fox this morning. Amen, amen. This time now we want to open the doors. I don't want to say that. This time we want to extend an invitation. We want to extend an invitation to anyone present who perhaps this message was for. Perhaps you thought you were coming to worship today and you thought maybe a lot of you thought you were going to hear me. Maybe you thought you were just going to hear good music, a motivational speech. But I just believe that God spoke today. God spoke today and it was not a children's sermon. It was a message for everybody. For everybody. And you know, it doesn't matter about your level of intelligence. God will always know more than you know. And integrity is not about the people who see us as much as it is about the God who sees and knows all. And so right now, this is a moment where you can be integrous, where you can have integrity because only you know if you need a relationship with the God of heaven. Just because you remain seated does not mean that everything is well and good in your life. But there may be somebody here and you know that you cannot say that you have completely surrendered your life and your heart into the hands of the God of heaven. That you do not have your own personal relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. Now you can stay seated you can fool me but I don't know everything or you can move this way you can move this way and don't worry about impressing anybody but move this way and certainly begin your journey with God if you're here this morning why don't you come now if you're sitting here and you know that you're not connected to a local church fellowship it is the will of God that every believer be connected to a local church it means then that this might not be the church for you but you ought to be connected to somebody's church there's no such thing as a churchless Christian so you can't say I'm a Christian I just don't do church that's just like a fish saying I don't do water I'm a walking fish. 
Show me a walking fish and I'll show you a dead fish. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe somebody else out there thinking now about this message and thinking about these words and you maybe you're wrestling with some difficult questions right now. Have you been walking in integrity as it relates to how you walk and stand with God? I'm not trying to guilt anybody into coming to faith. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty of not, about not being connected with a local church. But it's the will of God. This is what God desires for you. And so I'm just working hard trying to get you in the right place. That's in God's will. If you're here, why don't you come this morning? I can't, I can't tell you what this means for your life other than it opens up new possibilities for you. I can't tell you, does it make all of your problems go away? I can promise you it may bring you some new problems. It may make you wrestle with some more decisions and choices. But I can promise you that you will be blessed. You will. Maybe you're wondering, what does it mean to, to have a relationship with God? I don't know what that means. Well, in a relationship, I can tell you that you'll have God's protection. I can tell you that God will make provision for you. God will provide for you. I can tell you that God will accept full responsibility for you. I can tell you that God will, God will protect you. He'll keep you. God will open doors for you, make ways for you. All that's what happens here on earth. But also, though, this, this benefits you for eternity. Because you do know that everybody in here must die. And when your heart stops beating, still there's something beyond this life. That something beyond this life is eternity. As believers, as Christians... I must tell you that don't let anybody fool you now thinking that everybody's guaranteed paradise because that's just not the truth. But I tell you, a relationship with God and accepting His Son, Jesus Christ, will guarantee you that after it's all said and done on earth, you can spend eternity with God in heaven. Amen. And today you can walk out of here with that assurance with that confidence out of all the other questions that you may have you may not be sure about tomorrow you may not be sure about college you may not be sure about high school you may not be sure about varsity you may not be sure about the promotion you may not be sure about the marriage but you can be sure about eternity and you may be thinking eternity is a long way off but tomorrow is not promised to anybody Eternity can be here before you know it. Jesus could decide to come back right now. And I'm just telling you now that you can walk out of here today with assurance and knowing that my life is secure. Maybe I can't say the same about my job, but I can say the same about my life. And if you need that assurance, all you need to do is get up from wherever you are. If you aren't sure, lift your hand. We want to make sure that your questions get answered. As I said before, this is not to embarrass anyone. This is just to ensure that everyone in here has the opportunity to surrender their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, to accept him as their savior. And if we don't give you this opportunity, then everything that Garrett just said would have been a waste. Because he said all he said for this moment right here. He said all he said this morning to hopefully bring somebody into a relationship with God. Maybe then, for the rest of us who are still seated, maybe it's not that we need to accept Christ because we've already done it. Maybe it's not that we need a church home because we already have one. But maybe this message is just to remind us though. But I have kind of fudged the numbers in my life. I have colored outside the lines. I'm in that 13 times a week category at least so much there in that message and I just thank God for Garrett being obedient to both God and Q because you know he could have he could have you know put a te integrity aside and said well the Lord told me I need to preach on this 
But thank you, Garrett, for that message. Amen. Amen. Thank you, counsel. Let's thank God again. Let's thank God again for the message and his messenger. Amen. 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 Before we, uh, right now, our new members ministry is getting ready, but before we acknowledge our new members, do we have any way to go? Acknowledge there's no way to go. Okay, all right. So now we're going to get ready to recognize our new members who have completed their orientation. They're going to be fellowshipped into the life of our church. Please don't leave. We want to celebrate with them. Do you know that every person, when they join the New Hope Baptist Church, they go through what we call an orientation process. That orientation process basically gives them all the information they need to help them understand who they are in Jesus Christ, as well as what it means to be a part of God's church. So there are some universal things that we talk about about Christianity. There's some specific things that we talk about concerning New Hope Baptist Church. And we do this with both our children as well as adults. And so these individuals have completed their orientation. And technically, though you join our church and you walk down the aisle, you do not officially become a full-fledged member until you complete your orientation process. So this is a matter of growth. We get to witness and see what God is doing in the life of our church, how he's sending us new people, new families, new individuals with new experiences. And so we want to hear from them now. Praise God, New Hope. We have 15 new members graduating this morning. Let's give them a round of applause. New members, if you are in the building and you're not currently over here to my left side, please start making your way over to the left side. First on the list, we have Sister Natalie Earl. <laughs> Natalie. So stand over by your father and just stand right in the center, okay? Sister Cyan Hayes. Jaquita Holland. <laughs> Sister Donella Large. <laughs> Brother Eric Large. Sister Candace Martin. <laughs> Sister Roxanne Perkins. <laughs> Brother Greg Shelton. Sister Justine Shelton. Sister Shania Walker. Brother Carlos Wells Jr. Brother Carlos Well Sr. <laughs> Sister Chanel Wells. <laughs> Arisha Wells. And sister Beatrice Williams. I have just a couple from February. If you're in the building, please come up. Sister Sandra Collins and Sister Mignon Fields. 
Any names that have been called, if you are family members in the building, please see me after church so you can get their certificate and journal. Please give them a round of applause once again, please. Amen, amen, amen. New Hope, why don't we stand as we get ready to fellowship in our newest members. It is my privilege and honor now to extend to you all the right hand of fellowship, give you all rights, privileges, and responsibilities as members of New Hope Baptist Church. You all have shown yourselves to be diligent and faithful in the completion of your orientation process. We know that God has given you all at least one spiritual gift. And we know that you're going to make our house, our home, our church a better church. We thank God for you. God bless you. New Hope again, our newest members. Amen. You may return to your seats. God bless you. And let's thank God this morning. We have... Miss Arcasia Page, who comes to us as a candidate for baptism. Amen, amen. I call your attention now to the screens. Our media ministry has our announcements prepared for the week. A couple other things, and we will be on our way. Good day, New Hope. Here are your announcements for the week. Join our youth choir this afternoon at 4 p.m. as they lead us in worshiping while proclaiming, We Got Next. The musical will feature several local children's and youth choirs. Let's support our youth and encourage them in their walk with God. The theme for the youth and children's ministry for the month of May is honesty. Our memory verse is, anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. New Hope will honor members that are 2018 graduates from high school, GED, college or university, and career or technical program on Sunday, June 3rd during morning worship. Please fill out the graduate recognition form in the narthex and drop the form off in the graduation hat box before Wednesday, May 23rd. Join us for 3C Cafe. Coffee, Cupcakes, and Christ on Wednesday, May 23rd at 11 a.m. in the narthex before noon Bible study. Parents, summer break is right around the corner and Summer Blast is an eight-week day camp full of fun, enriching activities that will keep your kids active all day. The program runs Monday through Friday, June 11th through August 3rd from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Learn more by picking up a flyer and application in the narthex or by visiting newhopegr.org forward slash summer blast day camp. Stroke is the leading cause of long-term disability and is more often disabling than fatal. High blood pressure is one of the leading causes. Come and power up your knowledge immediately after morning worship on Sunday, May 27th, 2018 in the Narthex. Free blood pressure checks and resources will be available. For more information, contact the Health and Wellness Ministry. Getting a cancer diagnosis can be devastating for the individual, family, and friends. Beginning Tuesday, June 12th at 6 p.m., New Hope Stephen Ministry will lead a study group called The Conquerors to help individuals and their loved ones navigate the medical, emotional, relational, and yes, even the spiritual challenges of cancer or any other serious diagnosis. An essential part of Stephen Ministries' mission is ensuring that people who are hurting receive the care they need. There will be Stephen Ministry representatives in the narthex after morning worship to answer any questions and for those who are interested in signing up for this vital support. Men of New Hope, get ready for another Man Cave experience on Friday, May 25th at 6.30 p.m. in the Multipurpose Room. There will be food, fellowship, and fun. As always, this fellowship is for men only. At New Hope, we like to think of ourselves as family. However, with such a large congregation, it's easy to feel or become disconnected. Connect Groups are New Hope's solution. By creating opportunities 
for people to connect in small groups throughout the week, people get to know others who share similar interests while doing things they enjoy. We're excited about connect groups. Be on the lookout for more information in the fall. This concludes our announcements. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. You can also check out our webpage at www.newhopegr.org. And if you would like a copy of today's service on CD or DVD, you can go to the media window and make a purchase for $5. Have a blessed and wonderful week. Amen. Amen. Brothers, again, I know you sometimes we just kind of glance over and gloss over those announcements, but all of our men, we're going to be together on this Friday, this Friday at 6.30 p.m. for Man Cave. It's a great time of fellowship, so please just come and have a good time with us. Remember, we just sit around, we do what we do, and everybody's telling the truth with integrity. Everybody's telling the truth, and there's a plenty of calories going around, so we have a great time. We look forward to seeing everybody uh, this Friday. Um, how many of you all have saw, saw the news on Friday about the tragedy that happened in Santa Fe, Texas, at the Santa Fe High School? I need to help us connect some dots.